Hey lovely sexy hobby people, welcome to today's video which is going to be an unboxing for the Airfix 135 scale ferret scout car mark 2 um, <clears throat> and the easiest way to determine whether a scout car is a mark 2 or not is simply it has a turret or as the mark 1 if I remember correctly didn't um, so here we go um, we got obviously the box artwork on the front uh, sides gives a little bit of um, blurb about the vehicle then our three color schemes paints that you'll need ends look like this and then that side so I was excited for this when it was announced last year um, straight in we get our green sprues looks to be what five there five or six um and our destructions and some decals let's have a look at the decals real quick so these are absolutely gorgeous just looking there's no real excess carrier film on these um and they look absolutely exquisite as i say so we've got four vehicles here. Um, we've got one which I believe is the Berlin Brigade. Let's have a look. Uh, West Germany, August 1961. We then have the British Army Unit Suffield, or Battus, which is in Canada. And that's in the 1980s. And then we have the Ferret Scout Car Mark II, which is 5th Parachute Brigade, British Army in Cyprus, 1974. <clears throat> So nice, really nice decals there. Let's have a look at these destructions. Right, so we get on the front our usual multilingual history of the vehicle. And then obviously some info, multilingual info, and our icon guide. So we are building up. Right, here we go. So we're building up with the interior in the lower hull. Radio's in first. So it looks like vehicles A and C are going to be using Larkspur radios. Now I'm assuming these are Larkspur because the timing is suggestive that um, the Larkspur was still in, in use. Whereas I think the um, Klansman, so whether these are uh, 350 and 35, uh, a 351, 352 or a 353, I'm not sure. Um, they were kind of introduced from sort of like the mid 70s onwards. Um, so these look like Klansman radio here and these look like Larkspur. <clears throat> this is a two-man vehicle with driver and commander, specifically used for reconnaissance duties mostly, um, but also it was capable of providing wheeled armoured protection for patrolling other areas so hence the reason why it's used in Cyprus to patrol the demilitarised zone between the two factions so then that looks like we're getting a, a seat in um, then the driver's seat excuse the other phone going off I do apologise for that um, yeah driver's seat and that's possibly the commander's seat there and then we're putting on the hull halves. We have our armoured ports here um, going on. Some of them have uh, vision ports. And I kind of feel that out of the box, this appears to be reasonably detailed internally. Although, oh yeah, we have got the steering wheel which the steering wheel was 
in kind of like an upside down position on uh, this vehicle. So instead of like a car has the steering wheel like that, so and that's the top of it and it faces you, as far as I remember rightly, the Scout car was more sort of like in a downward position. Then we got the engine covers, then the suspension arms, uh, the road arms and the suspension going in. So the, it looks quite detailed. If these are one piece though, these the mould lines on these coils are going to be an absolute pig to deal with. Um, yeah, and then we're coming in with all the steering linkage. the fenders. I wonder if the wheels are weighted. That would be interesting to see if the wheels are weighted. Uh, the stowage box going on and it looks like we have a, a choice here. So for A, which is the early version, um, we've got one type of stowage and on the 1980s and 1974 version, we've got a different type of a uh, stowage. And then we've got some other more smaller detail parts going in, some towing eyes, etc. Then we're on to the wheels, and the wheels do look good from the pictures here. Then the Pioneer tools going on, smoke discharges. Oh, uncapped smoke grenades are included as an option in this kit. So yeah, you'd probably just need to maybe drill those out slightly. But it was usual to see vehicles running around with the black rubber caps on them. Then we have a water jerry can, obviously the headlights going on. More lifting eyes petrol jerry can, uh, exhaust and muffler, another exhaust cap option is included in this kit so that's cool so there's two options then we've got the exhaust shroud going on and then we have the antenna mountings so you have obviously antenna mountings which would have been used for the Larkspur and then antenna mountings that would have been used for the Klansman. Then we have our sand channels going on. Some rear wheels, then we have the turret ring going in the turret, the browning machine gun, yeah nice and then we have this searchlight on the side as well so and again you can have the top hatch open Does anybody know if there are any aftermarket kits out there for detailing the interior? Wow. So, yeah, I mean, so this is going to be 75 matte bronze green. Um... I mean, I distinctly remember growing up as a kid in the 80s, seeing most of the Mark IIs around my area, because I grew up in Hampshire, close to Borden, which was a Remy garrison, and I can remember a lot of the Scout cars there were still were sporting the two-tone black and green camouflage. 
and then we have our United Nations. There is a really lovely um, photograph that I saw in the 80s of a United Nations um, ferret at speed going over, um, uh, coming out of, uh, going over like a hump at speed. So it's like front was lifting off the ground. Really good action pose for it. But um, yeah, I've not been able to find it since. But this would be a nice one to build, I think. Um, and I believe that there have been some aftermarket decals issued as well. So there's your destructions. Lovely. Right, let's get into the plastic. So we got one, two, three, four, five, six sprues. Should we start with the clear? And what we'll do is we will bring you down. So come down. Oh, there's no real sort of like easy way for me to do this. So it is a bit janky. So the all we've got various headlight lenses on this and I'm assuming one of these is going to be the lens for the um, the lens for the searchlight as well but yeah so we got two four four pairs of headlight lens lenses or light lenses here which is interesting. I wonder why that is. Let's start with sprue A. So this is the majority of the outside of the hull. So here's the detail on the underside here. And we have our two sides um, with some of the detail already included on this, including some of the wiring uh, molded onto the hull pieces. Um, I'm not seeing a lot of, I'm not seeing any flash on this, which you know you'd hope to be the case considering how young this kit is. So. rivets and you know stand proud there's recessed panel lines where obviously they need to be um, obviously tread plates are raised cool then the other big sprue um, which is just the stowage so here's our two different types of stowage here uh, mud guards um, this is part of our exhaust cover, so it is textured, quite nice if you can see that with the um, checker grill on it. That I feel would benefit from being maybe a PE part. Here's our sand channel, three part build for the sand channels there. Again, these might benefit from PE parts if there is somebody out there making upgrade kits. Uh, Pioneer tools, shovel pick and pick head. Um, so water jerry can, fuel jerry can. Here's our smoke dischargers. So capped or uncapped. Yeah nice antenna mounts these look like the clansman ones here um i can't see the larkspur ones that looks like one there and one there so yep cool so some of the interior detailing. So here's our Larkspur radio here, 
and these look like our clansman radios here now these look like they're both the same and I honestly can't remember I actually did um, FFR and then standard two signals carder back in the mid 90s with my army reserve unit I, d I don't know if these are like three five threes maybe but I'm surprised that they've just molded them the same because when we had FFR we had different radio sets in there you know for different functions talking to sort of like battalion and company levels etc Three five three, or I mean, it's either three five one, three five two, or three five three. I think I may be remembering that wrong. Um, there's the back of the interior. So behind this bulkhead here would be um, the engine bay, cushions, some of the hatches, the steering wheel. Uh, here's our upper turret, well the, the turret I should say, not the upper turret, um, so the turret, we got our browning which looks quite nice, I mean it looks really nicely moulded, the barrel detail looks really good, I don't know if you can see, but the barrel detail looks absolutely spot on there. Um, yeah, I like it. I like it a lot so far. And then here's our tyres, which are not weighted, which is a shame. So I can't remember if I've seen an aftermarket kit of resin tyres that are weighted for the ferret. But here are our suspension coils. And then the drive arms which come in halves our part of our suspension arms and these look like the central hub caps for the road wheels so for these four you've got these and then this is our spare yeah, I like, I really do like this. This has been something I've wanted to get since it came out. Um, and as a vehicle, it's something that, you know, because I think the only other kit available was the resin one from Accurate Armour. And, um, you know, as, as much as I'm happy working in resin, it was perhaps just a bit big beyond my means to purchase but this from Airfix it's really nice to see I hope they continue you know I'd like to see them bring out you know maybe a stalwart maybe an abbot um, just vehicles from that kind of like 50s 60s and 70s era of the British Army um, because we got a lot of people producing kits like Challenger you know and chieftains out there but some of the other other kits that that made up part of the British Army like Fox you know combat vehicle reconnaissance wield um, and the Humber pig and Saladin I'd love to see these produced by Airfix um, in a 135 scale range you know as sort of like British Army of the 19 50s, 60s, 70s. And then obviously come out with some really decent figure kits, you know, to complement complement those kits that um, you're making, please. That's one of the things that really annoys me is that we get these vehicle kits, but then the manufacturers don't produce, for example, like driver figures, driver and commander figures for this. You know, I wouldn't mind if it was an, an additional kit rather than included in this kit, but the option to have them, you know, would be would be nice. Anyhow, that is the Airfix Mark II Ferrex Scout Car. 
Um, I really hope you enjoyed that quick look at this great kit. I like it. Um, and I hope that you will join me uh, in the build video. I am likely to build this fairly soon, to be quite honest. So hopefully I will see you then. All right, take care. Bye-bye.